Shalom, shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, all honor, and all glory to the Most High God, Yahweh, by Hashem, Hamashiach, Yahweh Shah. All right. Today's video, I'm going to be doing basically a reaction video to this Christian speaking on, you know, the title is Do Christians Have to Obey the Old Testament Laws? All right. Do Christians have to obey the Old Testament laws? So, before I want to get into that, I want to share this. This is a fair use disclaimer. Um, notwithstanding the provision, provisions of sections 106 and 108, the fair use of a copyrighted work, including such use by reproduction and copies or funnel records, or by any other means specified by that section. I might have said this wrong, but it is what it is. For purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, including multiple copies for classroom use, scholarship, or research is not an infringement of copyright. So I would like to use the fair use disclaimer. Let me get that out of here. And then let me pull... Let me pull the video up. Boom. Boom. So we should be good, I think. Let me see. If I'm, I got to make sure y'all are able to see it real quick. Okay, cool. We should be good, right? We're going to... Going to precepts. We're gonna, you know, we're gonna touch on everything he kind of touching on for the most part. It's not a long video, shouldn't be a long video, right? So let's uh let's just go ahead and hop into it, right? And when it comes to uh applying the Bible today, there are many, many commandments in the Bible, and uh should Christians obey them all. We, we think of all these commands, for instance, in the Old Testament. And some people charge us as Christians with being inconsistent. They'll say, you, you follow the commandments you happen to agree with, but many other commandments in the Bible you choose to ignore. And that's, that's, that's the truth. That's the honest truth, right? They, they, they get that. They get caught out by that, um, chiefly by the um, homosexual community. Right. Because Christians love to, you know, say up and down, you know, you can't you can't do this and you can't you know, you can't be gay and this, that and the third and blah, 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 because it's against it's against God. It's against the Bible. What uh, the homosexual community then rebuttals and replies to is you pick and choose. Right. You like to pick and choose and you're a hypocrite. So this is kind of this is kind of why he's speaking on this and, and on this matter. Right. Because it is true. I'm just being honest. It's true. Um, I want to grab two precepts on that real quick. Um, first precept is Malachi 2 and 9, right? Malachi 2 and 9. Um, it says, therefore, have I also made you contemptible or contemptible, yeah, and base before all the people. According as you have not kept my ways, but have been partial in the law. It's something that the most high God does not like. He doesn't like partiality, right? Now, some people want to say, oh, he went to the Old Testament. You know what I'm saying? That's kind of what this video is about anyway, you know? And, you know, the, 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 the stuff from all the Old Testament. I'll go to the New Testament, right? Matthew 23 and 23. This is Christ. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. For ye pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin, and have omitted the weightier matters of the law, judgment, mercy, and faith. So these men omitted the weightier matters of the law, right? Let's see what Christ says. These ought ye have to done. So you should have done these things, what? And not to leave the other undone. What does that mean? That means you should have done these just because I said do these don't mean disannul that. Don't be partial in the law. 
You got a witness from the Old Testament and the New Testament, right? So, yes, he is correct. They get called out on that a lot um, about being partial in the law. I call it out a lot. Whenever I'm talking to a Christian, I call them out on that. Okay, cool. I don't have to do this, that, and the third, but is it okay for me to be gay? They'll always say no. I ask why. One time a guy told me it was specifically, it's specifically in God's word that you can't be gay. Okay, well, it's specifically in God's word to keep the law. Now what? All right? So you kind of get, you know, but let's see what Buddy got to say. For example, the Bible, the Bible says don't wear a garment with two different kinds of cloth. So uh, don't wear a garment with polyester and cotton. I mean, we all you see how problematic that is for him? Let's first I was go to the precept. Let's go to the precept. Um boom. Deuteronomy 22 and 11. Thou shalt not wear a garment of diverse sorts as a woolen and linen together. Right? Now, how I keep this scripture, I don't mix woolen and linen. If you know anything about wool, you know anything about linen. Wool comes from um, animal. Linen comes from plant. I don't mix those two things together. Some people take it as all di different types of variety, I mean, varieties of different fabrics, so on and so forth. To me, that's fine if you do that. Not for the same thing. All praises, right? And I know that it's doable, right? I know that it's doable, but he is using it and he's applying it and he's trying to say it as if it's an outlandish statement, as if it as if God is wrong for requesting such. He's saying it as if God is wrong for requesting you to not know if America was truly built up on God's laws and kept that law. He wouldn't be speaking on it in that manner. He wouldn't. But. What is America based on is based on a lot of iniquity. So a lot of things are mixed together. So now he's trying to make it seem like the Bible is off because of America's standards and because of how we live today. No, you can't do that. So he's trying to make it seem like as this, if it's a ridiculous thing for you to keep this law. Let's keep let's keep watching. I have all kinds of commands like this in the Bible. Don't 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 boil a, a goat and its mother's milk. I mean, nobody thinks about that command. Maybe some of you haven't even heard of that command. And whose fault is that? Whose fault is that, right? Whose fault is it that most people don't know about the command, that commandment? And most people haven't heard of that commandment. Whose fault is that? Hmm? The scriptures tell you to go read the law, study the law, meditate on the law. Day and night. What, so it's our fault. So no, no, no. It's our fault for knowing that what that is. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and trying to keep it and trying to observe it. And he said, there's many of commandments like that. Like what? Are you saying that God's commandment is ridiculous? God is the one that gave it in the Old Testament. Right? Who else gave it? What are we, what are we saying here? Is it now ridiculous? Is it now to... Are we to look at God's law as if it is complete nonsense? I'm not going to do that. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to listen. I'm not going to look at buddy. You know what I'm saying? He's kind of he's kind of painting God's law as if it's a ridiculous thing. I'm going, I'm sticking with God on this one. Let's keep watching. So clearly, I would say as Christians, we're not the first Christians to think about these things. Clearly, Christians have argued even if you're not aware of this, no, we're, we're not required to obey all the commands in Scripture. So the question is, is that arbitrary? Is that whimsical? Do we have a reason? Do we have a foundation for what we're saying? And I'd say we do have a reason. We, we do have a foundation. There's a good reason. And that good reason is we have to read the Bible in terms of its storyline. We have to read the Bible in terms of its covenantal development. So there are many covenants mentioned in the Bible, but for our purposes here, there's an old covenant made with Israel. That covenant made with Israel, they had certain requirements, and those requirements that were given to Israel set them apart from the nations. It distinguished.
Guess what? He's correct. The covenant was given to Israel and those law, statutes, and commandments that were written in that was given to Israel to set us apart from other nations. Yes. It's nothing wrong with that, right? Let's keep reading. I mean, let's keep watching. My bad. Israel from the nations. So we, we have an old covenant and then we have a new covenant in Jesus Christ. That, that, that new covenant is prophesied in Jeremiah 31, Ezekiel 36, other. This is where I disagree. This is why I disagree, right? A lot of people may think that Jeremiah 31 covenant is talking about, you know, the covenant that Christ brought or ushered in. Um, he mentions Ezekiel 36. I haven't, I haven't went to this and checked this one out. Let me see what this one is talking about. Boom. Let me see. And I'll put a new, I'll put my spirit within you and walk to my statues. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah, no. The reason, the reason why this isn't talking about the covenant that Christ came with is because we don't see, we don't see these things happen. We don't see these things happen when Christ hit the scene, right? Uh, Ezekiel 36 and 26, a new heart also will I give you and a new spirit and I'll put within you and I will take away the stony heart out of the flesh and I will give you a heart of flesh, right? Meaning what? We're not, we're not going to uh, be stiff necked towards the most high God anymore. We're actually going to follow after the most high God. We're not going to be stiff hearted. People today are still stiff hearted, right? Verse 27, and I'll put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and ye shall keep my judgments and do them. Hasn't happened. And ye shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers. We're not. And ye shall be my people and I will be your God. That none of that, none of that has took place yet. Right? None of that has took place yet. Jeremiah 31. Let's see why Jeremiah 31 isn't the covenant that Christ came. That uh isn't the covenant that Christ came with, right? Jeremiah 31, 31. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. This automatically, first off, is automatically disqualifies buddy. Automatically. I'm almost certain buddy is not not, not an Israelite. If he is, then this disqualifies everybody who he thinks is this, this covenant is talking about. It's not. I, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Not according to the covenant that I made with, with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break, although I was in husband unto them, saith the Lord. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Most Israelites that I know understand this hasn't happened, um, or this hasn't happened. Verse 34, and they shall teach no more every man his neighbor. This hasn't happened. And every man his brother saying, know the Lord, for they shall all know me. All, all don't know God, right? I asked somebody the other day, what's God's name? But he told me God, right? Don't know God. From the least of them unto the greatest of them, saith the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity and I will remember their sin no more. Hasn't happened, right? This is not the, this is not the covenant that Christ came with. Um, I'm going to actually, I, I, I guess I can... Go to it real quick. Matthew 26 and I'm going to start at 27. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it unto them, saying, Drink ye all of it, for this is my blood of the New Testament or New Covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. This is the covenant that Christ came with, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. The covenant that Christ came for was for repentance of sins. Right? Let's 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 go to Hebrews 9 and 15. Hebrews 9 and 15 says this. And for this cause, he is the mediator talking about Christ. He is the mediator of the New Testament or new covenant that by means of death for the redemption of the transgressions, for the redeeming of the transgressions that were under the first testament, meaning this is for the people that were under the first testament. Buddy disagreed earlier that Israel was under the first testament. The covenant was for Israel, right? They it says they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. So this cuts all of that. 
Hebrews 9, 15, Matthew 26, that covenant that Christ came with is different than Jeremiah 31 and is different than Ezekiel, right? Christ came with a covenant that was remission for sins. We read that in Matthew 1 and 21. He came to save his people from their sins, right? He ushered in grace. That way me, we may be able to repent. If you watch our channel, you already know the breakdown, right? Let's just keep reading. I mean, let's just keep watching. Passages as well. When we read the whole Bible, when we read the old covenant in light of the new, we see that that old covenant has passed away. Christians are no longer under the. Let's go to the, let's go to the verses that he's uh, referring to. All right. Romans seven. All right. Romans seven. Romans seven and verse six is what he pulled. But now we are delivered from the law. That being dead, wherein we were held, that we should serve in newness of spirit and not in the boat, not in the oldness of the letter. All right. What is this talking about? All this is talking about because he's saying we're not under the law. We're, we're now under grace. We're not under the punishment or under the immediate punishment that came with the law. Right. We have been delivered from that. Was Romans 8 and 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to them that are, which are in Christ Yahweh who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Yahweh have made me free from the law of sin and death. We are freed from the law of you sin, then you die. It's literally what it's talking about. You're free from the law of you sin, then you die. Under Moses' law, you got stoned without mercy if you were an adulterer, an idolater, murderer. It, 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 it happened. Now that Christ has come, you are able to repent. That's all it's talking about. When somebody comes to you and says we're not under the law, that does not mean you are free to go break the law. I'm going to just keep it. I'm going to just be honest. It, it doesn't mean that. Right. Hebrews 8 and 13. And that he saith the new covenant, he hath made the first old. Now that which decayeth and waxeth old is ready to vanish away. It says it's ready to vanish away. That doesn't mean that it's vanished away. Right. That's that's simple reading comprehension. That doesn't really need to need a, uh, a, a damn end up breakdown. Um, let me go to this next one. Galatians 3 and 24. This is going over exactly what I just talked about. Galatians 3 and 24. Wherefore, the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, that we might be justified by faith. But after that faith has come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster, meaning we are no longer under the law. We are no longer under the judgments of the law. Now we have grace. That's simply all it's going into. We are under grace. How can I prove that? What do you mean? What, what, what are you talking about? You know, I can I can be a sinner and I can go off and I can commit any kind of sin that I want to. And OK, cool. Romans 13 and 14. But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. Don't make provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof, to go and work in sin. Um, one of my favorite chapters in Romans is Romans chapter six, because Paul puts it plainly on the table. Um, what shall we say then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. What is sin? Sin is the transgression of the law. Did Paul say, um, you know, since the new covenant is here, you can kind of do these sins and you can kind of, you know, you can kind of get away with these sins. But you don't want to, you know, you don't want to do that. He didn't make, no, that's not what he said. Um, he didn't come with that because Paul is a master, is a doctor at the law, and he understands that, right? I want to grab one more precept. 1 Corinthians 9. 1 Corinthians 9 and verse 7. It says, who goeth a, war, a, war, who goeth a warfare any time at his own charges? Who planteth a vineyard and eateth not of the fruit thereof? Or who feedeth the flock and eateth not of the milk of the flock? Say I these things as a man, or saith not the law the same also? Why, Paul, why? 
why are you going to the law to these Corinthians? If they if they are truly Edomites and everything, and you know what, they, they, all these other people over here, why are you quoting the law to them? Hmm. Because these people's Israelites, they studied Moses. They're, they they they're getting acquainted with the law. Paul is teaching that, right? Let's see, verse nine. For it is written in the law, of Moses, thou shalt not muzzle the ox. So I can, thou shalt not muzzle the mouth of the ox that treadeth out the corn. Doth God take care for the oxen? When you read this context, you'll understand Paul is 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 requesting some type of some type of anything. For his labor that he's been doing, he's been putting in this much labor for the Corinthians and they're not they're not giving him stuff back. Verse 11. If we have sown unto you spiritual things, is it a great thing if we shall reap your carnal things? Right. So when people when people get to tripping about um, some Israelites asking for donations or asking the um, what is it called? Um, tithe or. Or any kind of thing, right? Just help out the ministry in any kind of way because this does require money. This is what Paul was doing. Paul was saying, help the ministry. You haven't given us anything. We we do all this work. We do all this studying. We do all this, this end up breakdown. We give you all of this stuff for free. Come on, help me out a little bit. That's all Paul is talking about. That's all. But why did he go to the law? Why did he go to this weird law? Like Buddy was saying other, 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 uh, just a second ago. Why would he go to the weird law? You know, thou shalt not muzzle an ox. Why did Paul pull that out? It's because it still matters. That's why, right? Still matters. Let's keep watching. The old covenant. They are no longer under the stipulations, the commands, the prescriptions in that old covenant. The new covenant is new. So none of the commands, I would argue, None of the commands in the Old Testament are binding in and of themselves because that whole. Christianity is irresponsible. Christianity is very irresponsible. You get you get teachings like this. Where a young man may may be listening. And he may have a hard time, you know, trying to find his faith in God. He hears something like this. Cut the video right off, right at 228. None of the commandments are binding. I'm going to go to heaven anyway. Yeah, right? I had a Christian white boy tell me one time. He said, um, he said, I can go, I can go blow up that building right now with all those people in it. And I'm still, I'm still, I'm still going to be saved. I'm still okay. Because God knows my heart. And I say that, I go over that story a lot. I know I do. My apologies. But it's so baffling because Christian Christianity is that irresponsible. None of these commandments bind you. Okay, let's just keep watching. Old covenant has passed away as a package. We're under the the new covenant and everything in the old covenant. All the Old Testament is passed away in the package, right? So don't believe on God no more, I guess. Entirely. So really, the question is, why do we keep any of the commands in the old covenant? Not why do we avoid some, but why do we keep some of them? And we do keep some of them, don't we? Some of them are repeated in the New Testament. Don't commit adultery. Honor your father and mother. Don't murder. Don't steal. Don't lie. And some other commandments as well. Is I wonder why. I, want, I wonder why, right? He didn't mention the one about the ox. And there's some more I can find, too, you know, where uh, Paul was met with an axe, thou shalt not revile the gods. And Paul submitted to that. Right. Paul yielded to that. I wonder why these 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 co uh, commandments are mentioned in the New Testament. Right. Uh, and I wonder why, because they always teach you throw away everything in the Old Testament. Start in Matthew. My bad. Don't start in Matthew. Start in Acts. Start reading the Bible in Acts, go on to Paul, and then go on all the way over until you get to Revelation. To hell with everything that's going on back in, the, in that back in that old stuff. You can kind of pick up the Psalms, you know what I'm saying? You can kind of read a little bit of Psalms. Everything else, though, throw it away. It's garbage. That's what they're teaching. That's what they're getting down with, right? Is there a rationale in when the New Covenant 
like I just read, is for the remission of sin. It's for the repentance, for you to repent. What is repent? Christ said, unless ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. Repent means to turn away from your sins. How do I do that? I don't know what sin is. You go find it in the laws of God in the Old Testament. That's what you do. Genesis, right? Leviticus. Uh, for some reason, I keep wanting to say Moses. <laughs> I was going to say Moses like it was a book, but Moses wrote it. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, right? That's where you go find that. That's where it. It's that simple. And then it, guess what? It's reiterated throughout all these books. Joshua, Judges, Kings, Samuels, Esther, Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes. It's, it's reiterated through all this. Even, even still in Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. You got it reiterated in Acts. You got it reiterated in Romans. So on and so forth. Why? I wonder why. I wonder why in Acts. I wonder why in Acts they said this, Right? Acts 15 and 20, but that we write unto them, talking about the Gentiles, that we write unto them that they abstain from pollutions of idols and from fornication and from things strangled and from blood. And that's in the law. For Moses of old time hath in every city them that preach him. What does that mean? In every city, they have the the, 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 the the Torah preached to them. Where? Being read in the synagogues every Sabbath day. Hmm. Hmm. There's a lot of Old Testament stuff, man. I thought we were supposed to trash all that, man. What the New Testament writers are doing. And, and I think the most helpful way to think of it, actually, is... The New Testament writers, I think, argue that we are under now what Paul calls the law of Christ in Galatians chapter 6, verse 2, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 20 and 21. Let's go take a look at these. 1 Corinthians 9, 21. To them that are without law, as without law, being not without law to God, but under the law to Christ, that I might gain them that are without law. All he said, he literally said it right there. Being not without law to God, I'm not without the law of God. I'm under the law of Christ. One and the same thing, just how it was the law of Moses. You had the law of God. It's one and the same thing, right? There's, there's no difference. Galatians 6 and 2. Um, um, bear ye one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. That's crazy. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see what let's see what the, the, the Torah has to say. The thing we gotta throw away, right? Let's see if this is new. Let's see, let's see if bearing your brother's burden is new. Exodus 23 and 4. If thou meet thine enemy's ox or his ass going astray. Thou shalt, thou shalt surely bring it back to him again. Is that bearing your brother's burden? Yeah. Is that the law of Christ? Yeah. Is that the law of God? Yes. It's not new. None of these laws that you talk, it's not new. I'm going to just be honest. It's not new. We're not under the law of Moses. We're under the law of Christ. What is the law of Christ fundamentally? Galatians 5.14. Let's go see Galatians 5.14. Let's see if he quote anything else real quick. The law of Christ is the law of love. And that That's madness. Galatians 5 and 14. For all the law is fulfilled. First off. First off, right? This does not say it's the law of Christ. Doesn't say that. It says, for all the law is fulfilled in one word, even this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. That's not, that, that. you know what that is? It's the law of God. It doesn't say anything about the law of Christ. But like I said, they're one and the same. They're synonymous. But he's trying to take away from the law of God that much 
as if Christ is so opposed to what the Most High God brought in the beginning. Let me grab this because it's not the first time that, that Paul mentions this, the, the, the law being love. Romans 13 and 9. For this, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not covet. And if there be any other commandment, if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Any other commandment or law that it is, that it is in there you, it is, is under love thy neighbor. That's what it is. Does that mean I now go and break all the commandments and be like, ah, you know, I love you though. No, I go and do what the Torah said. And that's how I know that I love my neighbor. Let's just keep watching. And that's what Jesus taught too. That's in Paul, Galatians. But Jesus taught Matthew 22. How do you summarize what the law is about ethically? It's about loving God and loving your neighbor. I want to see what they're saying. Matthew 22 and 37. Oh, on these two hang, on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Yeah, the law the all is summed up in those two things. That's what it is. That's what the law is about. Loving your people. That why is that so hard to understand? Why do they want to compress it to where it's now like Okay, cool. Forget all of that, and let's just call it love. Let's just do that. No, no, we we go and follow the Torah, right? That's that's how we show we love God. That's how we show we love our neighbor. That's all it is. Neighbor, and then both Jesus and Paul and other New Testament writers unpack what that love is. What does love look like? Well, if you love, you honor your father and mother. If you love, you don't steal. All the New Testament New Testament people unpack that. That was that been here. Look at him. He think that he think he thought he ate. He thought it was deep. Well, if you love your neighbor, you you won't you won't lie to him. You won't steal. You know, no, duh. We learned that from the Torah. We got the understanding from the Old Testament that you want to throw away so bad. If you if you, if you love, you don't murder. And you you don't commit adultery. So some of those commands, it's not surprising, is it? Some of those. Where does it say that? So some of those commands, yeah, they're kind of cool. Yeah. But that other stuff, man, nah. get that out of here, man. Not in here. It's not. In, Christ even said, I, told, I, I started the video out by saying being partial in the law is not okay with God. We read that, I believe, in Malachi. And I went to Matthew 23. Where it said, these ought you have done and not leave the other undone. Don't be partial in the law. That's just all it is. Commands from the Old Testament, Passover. Some of those commands, they're still required for today. But they're not required because they're part of the Old Covenant. They're required because the New Testament. This is how bad they, they, they hate God. They're not required because of the covenant God brought. Let's be is required because the new covenant where Christ brought. Some of them, not all of them. You know what I'm saying? It's a whole there. Here's how Christians will typically describe the law. There's so many of those things you can't keep them. Okay, my question is which one is hard? Which one can you not keep? Gets quiet. Right. Let's keep watching. Testament indicates that they're part of the law of Christ. So, I, so I think actually, when we read the script, Testament indicates that they're part, they're part of the old covenant. They're required because the New Testament indicates that they're part of the law of Christ. So, I the New Testament indicates that they are a part of the law of Christ. That is not true. Just because you see the law in the New Testament does not instantly mean law of Christ. Why is this problematic? Because people like to divide the law of Christ up from the law of God. Same thing like they like to do with the law of Moses and the law of God. They are all synonymously one thing and they all shall remain the same thing. You know what it is? The Torah. Sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. That's just what it is, man. You know what I'm saying? It, it sucks, I guess, but that's just what it is, bro. 
That's, that's all it is. But, so I think actually when we read the scripture, we're not being arbitrary. We're not being whimsical. We're not, we're not just picking out the commands we want to obey. We're actually being faithful. We're being faithful to what the Bible as a whole. Yeah, we're being faithful by, by, by saying to hell with the Old Testament, to hell with all those other covenants and, and, and laws. F all that. Let's just keep a little bit of this stuff right here. This should sound easy. Let's just do that. You know what I'm saying? And, and if you break it, ah, you're fine. We're under grace. Um, you can just, you know, say you repent and he'll forgive you, man. You believe, right? Well, you know, once saved, always saved. We're good. No, that is, um, that's complete madness. I'm going to call it what it is. That's complete madness. Um, one, 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 one quote that I love that uh, Ignatius, Ignatius, the uh, church father wrote, he said, no man who truly confesses faith sinneth. Meaning someone who, who truly believes, who truly has faith, who's confessing faith. They're not, they're not a sinner. They're not. I mean, that's just, that's a fact. That's just what it is. Right. And I'm going to stop the video right here look at him that's madness that's madness i'm not dealing with that no more um laura will and i start doing more of these react videos um let me see i'm gonna grab this i'm gonna grab this uh i'm gonna grab this preset romans 6 and 23 for the wages of sin is death but the gift of god is eternal life through yahusha mashiach our lord and with that, I want to give all praises, all honor, and all glory to the Most High God, Yahweh, by Shem and Mashiach, Yahweh. With that, I want to say Shalom.